I'd like to illustrate a euro dollar futures contract. That's an interest rate derivative where the contract references an interest rate that is the three month LIBOR. And so we want to understand the contract price that embeds the futures quote. And that futures quote makes reference to a three month LIBOR interest rate. <laughs> Before I break down an actual euro dollar futures contract trade, I found it's helpful to define three of the variables that are part of this contract or three of the components that are part of the contract. And I remind you, this is a futures contract or interest rate derivative specifically. That means we have a futures contract with standardized specifications that buyers and sellers all know what to expect. The futures contract makes reference to an underlying commodity. In the case of consumption commodities, that underlying commodity might be corn or copper. Here, the underlying is an investment commodity. So the underlying is an interest rate. And in the case of a euro dollar futures contract, specifically, it's a three month LIBOR. We'll follow John Hull and denote that with R for a three month LIBOR. Notice how it's three months. So we have the futures contract, which is different than the underlying LIBOR. This helps to with one of the confusions, which is that we would enter into the futures contract here at time zero, let's say, and that futures contract can have various maturities. It might have one month maturity, it might have three month maturity, or it might have one year maturity. And then what's relevant at maturity of the futures contract is the then prevailing three month LIBOR. See how the futures contract has its own maturity and it's a bet or a hedge on a future three month LIBOR. What's the three month LIBOR prevailing at maturity of the contract? So that's our first variable, R is the rate. And in my example, let's just say that the anticipated or predicted future LIBOR is 3%. The futures quote is what we see if we go over to CME group and we want to look at the prices. The futures quote denoted Q is just 100 minus R. So there's an inverse relationship. So we don't see the LIBOR of 3%, we see the 97. But we could just say, one, we could just take do the calculation, 100 minus 97 is an anticipation or prediction of a future three month LIBOR equal to 3%. So if that's confusing, I just remind you to compare it to bonds where classic bonds where if we take a long position on a bond or we purchase a bond, right? We would purchase the bond such that when the yield goes down, the price of the bond goes up and we gain. Notice the inverse relationship here is directionally the same. Rate goes down and because the quote is 100 minus R, that means the quote goes up and vice versa. So the futures quote then is an element here in the contract price. Again, that's part of the contract specification. And I won't dive into the formula here. Not easy. It's not difficult at all to understand the formula. I will just highlight the key feature. And that is that it was designed with a purpose. And that is that every one basis point change in the LIBOR is meant to correspond to a $25 gain or loss in a single contract. That's why it's sized this way. So I have here an example of a LIBOR rate of 3% that is implied by a futures quote of 97. And you can see a contract price here of 992,500. If I were dramatic and said that LIBOR dropped to 2%, you can see the futures quote has an inverse relationship it increases from 97 to 98, and the contract price increases also. So if we take a long position in the euro dollar futures contract, we expect plus 25 gain on the contract for every one basis point drop in the underlying LIBOR, because that's uh, reflected in an increase in the quote price. On the other side of the trade, a short position will profit by $25 for a single contract if the LIBOR rate increases. So those are the three variables. Once understood, I think that following the trade is 
very straightforward if we understand these. The rate, the quote is based on the rate, the quote informs the contract price, and we just keep separate the fact that there's a futures contract that makes reference to this future three-month LIBOR. The only other thing I would say about the three-month LIBOR, because it's relevant if we're doing specific calculations or, or we want to do translations accurately, is we want to keep in mind this is a money market instrument, and so it follows day count convention of actual 360 days with, because this is a three-month LIBOR, quarterly compounding. Right? If you followed me on my interest rate tutorials, you know we need to be specific about the day count convention and the compound frequency. And this uh, Eurodoll futures contract embeds these assumptions as part of its specification. Day count actual 360 with quarterly compounding. Sometimes we need to make those translations. Okay, with that understood then, here is holes table 6.2. I did add a uh, column here for the price, but otherwise it's the same. And the idea here is that the trader on May 3rd, 2016, enters at the trade price of 99.3, I'm sorry, 99.33. And now we know, well, what is that anticipating the future three month LIBOR to be? And we know we could just take a one minus that trade price, and I'm, I'm just dividing by 100 to handle the percentages the percentage, and the 99.33, you can see it's only 67 basis points away from 100. So this trade price quite high is anticipating a future three-month LIBOR of only 67 basis points. This is a short-term trade that Hull has illustrated. He only goes from May to June, and then he's got um, Im imagined here fluctuating futures prices, right? That's typical. The futures price will fluctuate over time due to many variables. But one of the strong drivers is that as contract maturity approaches, the futures price converges on the spot. So we'd expect that futures price to start to converge on the prevailing three-month LIBOR spot rate. So these are in yellow because they could be anything. And you can see here that the 99.33 immediately moves down to 99.325. And I'll just capture that. And then to 99.275. And finally settling at 99.22. So what we have here uh, cumulatively is a drop in the future's quote from 99.33 to 99.22 and then if I just back that out from 100 or 1 you can see that it that reflects or represents an increase in the LIBOR cumulatively from 67 basis points to 78 basis points so at each day this is a future contract so daily settlement with margin calls the contract price change so that means that at the end of the day, each daily settlement, there is a comparison between the margin account and the maintenance margin to determine if there's a margin call. But the contract price is fluctuating. But then I'll just skip the interim here, get to the 99.22. You can see in terms of this trader, it doesn't say here, but this trader has entered a long position in this Euro dollar futures contract. And the price has moved down because LIBOR has moved up. And we see the LIBOR here has moved from 67 basis points to 78 basis points. That's an increase in 11 basis points cumulatively over the one plus month period. And you'll notice 11 basis points multiplied by $25 per basis point. I'll just spell that out here just to make that clear. 11 BPS multiplied by $25 by design of the contract and that formula equals $275. That was by design. And in this case, it's a long position. The quote price went down because the interest rate, or specifically three month LIBOR went up. And so this long position experiences a loss of $275. So that's the interpretation of uh, John Hull's table 6.2. In the next video, I'll show how the Euro's future, Euro dollar futures contract is used to hedge interest rate risk. 
If you found this video helpful, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.